Today, we're talking about the impending 2027 EPA emission protocols for diesel engines that are set to come down on the diesel industry here in the near future. And I figured it'd be fun to take a look at what we can expect, as well as give you guys my opinion as a diesel mechanic that, well, works directly with emission systems almost on a daily basis. Welcome back, I'm Alex. Last week we were talking about a potential new Cummins engine, but I briefly mentioned the 2027 EPA emission protocols for diesel engines, and you guys were having none of it. And so I figured we'd take a deeper dive and take a look into what exactly is going on because there's, there's three major components or changes happening. First of all, diesel particulate matter, the black stuff, needs to be, needs to be reduced by an additional 50%. NOx gases need to be reduced by an additional 82.5%. And lastly, mandatory manufacturer warranty needs to be extended by an additional 280%. So a lot to get into, and I figured we'd break it down. Now, before we go there, I wanna take a brief overview of the four major components on a modern diesel emission system and what exactly they all do. On a diesel engine, there are three main pollutants that we are worried about coming out of the exhaust. Number one, carbon monoxide. I feel like most people understand what that is. Number two is diesel particulate matter. It's the black stuff, essentially unburnt fuel. And number three is NOx gases. Today we got a Ford with a six, seven power stroke to play around with. And that brings me to the first emission component, EGR or exhaust gas recirculation. Here's your EGR tubes going back in your intake. So essentially, and I think most people understand this, a portion of the exhaust gases gets brought back around from the, from the exhaust manifold into your intake manifold and then rerun through the engine. The term reburn is a little bit deceptive because it's not necessarily what we're, we're doing. Essentially bringing exhaust gases back through the intake, it just lowers the amount of oxygen the engine is getting, which lowers cylinder temperatures, which then lowers NOx gases. And that is the sole purpose of an EGR system. It is to lower cylinder temps, which then reduces the amount of NOx gases coming out of the exhaust. Number two, moving directly into our exhaust, we have our diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC right here. A diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC is pretty much like a catalytic converter on a passenger vehicle. It helps to eliminate carbon monoxide, breaking it down into nitrogen or water. Now behind that, introduced in 2007, I think a lot of people know what this is. This is a diesel particulate filter. Basically what we have is a filtration medium and it helps to reduce about 99% of the soot, the black stuff, out of the exhaust. And then in 2012, behind the DPF is the newest emission component, and that is called your Selective Catalytic Reduction, or SCR for short, and that uses diesel exhaust fluid to help further reduce NOx gases. So DEF is comprised of 33% urea and 66% water, and what happens is DEF is sprayed into the SCR system, and with magic sciencey stuff. As the DEF goes over the catalyst, it breaks down the NOx gases, the, the toxic pollutant, into oxygen and nitrogen, I believe. So that's a basic overview of the four components of a modern emission system. And if you guys are unclear, drop a comment down below and I'll try and answer it. Unfortunately, I need to know the stuff inside and out because it's always breaking and I need to figure out why it's breaking. Um, but I will say when it is running properly, I mean, we could run a diesel truck in our shop for hours upon hours and you'd never know it's even running. That's how clean these systems can be. Which is why I'm a little bit shocked at how strict the 2027 EPA emission protocols are going to be. And it certainly has the chance to really change the diesel industry because it is one of the biggest policy changes in the last 20 years. The first policy change involves diesel particulate matter, meaning that these current diesel particulate filters are probably not up to the task at filtering all that extra soot. The current particulate matter standard set by the EPA in 2007 is 0.01 grams per horsepower per hour. Now that will be changing to 0.005 grams, which is not a lot. And to put that in perspective, a current direct injection gasoline passenger vehicle releases about 10 to 15 milligrams of particulate matter per kilometer, whereas a diesel engine releases about five milligrams per kilometer at the current standard. Now in 2027 being reduced by an additional 50%, that would technically mean that a diesel engine releases about 10 times less particulate matter than a normal direct injection passenger 
gasoline engine. And I guess that raises an interesting point that since gasoline vehicles are technically gonna be releasing much more particulate matter than a diesel engine, is the EPA looking at potentially putting filters on gas engines? And you bet your bottom dollar they're probably looking at that. I know, or I believe, in Europe, since 2019, all gasoline passenger vehicles have to have gasoline particulate filters on them, it involves regens and all that fun stuff. So don't be sleeping on gas engines because sooner than later, I would imagine, they might also have filters on them. Getting back to the diesels, manufacturers are going to have to make some changes to make or meet the more strict particulate matter um, emission protocols. Cummins, for example, is going to be putting a 48 volt electric heater in their diesel particulate filters. And this is gonna apparently help keep the temperatures up and therefore make them much more efficient. But this heater is gonna be run off a separate alternator. And well, for someone who personally works on DPF issues very regularly, adding more electrical complexity just makes me cringe a little bit, if I'm gonna be honest. Which by the way, most manufacturers already inject raw diesel into their DPS for regen purposes. So not only do we have raw fuel going into our DPF and potentially more electronic complexity, I would imagine the DPFs are gonna fill up with soot quicker because they're filtering more soot, which means more regens and potentially just a shorter life of the diesel particulate filter. And I'm pretty sure most manufacturers consider a diesel particulate filter a maintenance item. Therefore, when it reaches the end of its life, it's not gonna be covered under this extended warranty if I had to guess. The second major change coming in 2027 with this EPA protocol update is a large reduction in NOx gases, roughly 82.5%. And in my opinion, I think it's gonna be the hardest for these diesel manufacturers like Ford, Detroit Diesel, Cummins to make without completely destroying engine performance and fuel economy. Now, the current standard is 0.2 grams of NOx gas per brake horsepower per hour, and that will be reduced to 0.035 grams per brake horsepower per hour. Now there is this interesting inverse relationship between NOx gas and diesel particulate matter, which I would imagine makes it tough for manufacturers to try and go about um, reducing both because as we lower cylinder temperatures with EGR, what happens is we get less complete combustion or less complete burn of fuel, which then produces more soot. So as we reduce NOx gases with lower cylinder temperatures, we produce more soot, but if we want to create less soot, we raise cylinder temperatures, create more complete combustion, and then that then produces more NOx gases. So it's this interesting inverse relationship between these two pollutants. So this is something that manufacturers like good old Ford are gonna have to sort of wrestle with because yes, you could just dump a ton of EGR gas into the engine, and that would lower NOx gases, but you're also gonna produce a ton more soot and you're gonna just crush fuel economy. So I would imagine most manufacturers are gonna take the approach that Cummins has apparently taken, and that is to leave the EGR gas flow alone, keep it as is, and then just dump a ton more DEF into the SCR system, make the SCR system more efficient, and hopefully that will translate to better NOx elimination from the exhaust. In fact, here's what Cummins had to say about lowering NOx gases by an additional 82.5%. That means the after treatment system for 2027 will be working a bit harder and smarter than previous versions. Cummins will continue using exhaust gas recirculation. It's a proven method of getting NOx to the lowest levels right out of the engine before it goes to the after treatment system. It's an engineering balancing act. Increasing the amount of EGR lightens the load on the after treatment system, but usually comes with fuel economy and performance penalties. Dialing back the percentage of EGR forces an increase in DEF consumption, but it gives back fuel economy. So even Cummins is sort of talking about this, this balancing act and this really fine sort of dialing in the emission system to meet those emission protocols, but still have a decently working running engine. Cummins will also introduce a brand new dual chamber SCR system. And that will once again have a 48 volt uh, electric heater in it, just like the DPF. And as Cummins correctly points out, the hotter you can keep an SCR system, the more efficient it will be at eliminating NOx gases. So, and once again, if I'm gonna be completely honest, hearing about new after treatment systems, new SCR systems especially, it just, it doesn't give me the confidence I wanna feel, at least on the 
Freightliner Western Star side, I would say the SCR system, which as we mentioned earlier, utilizes diesel exhaust fluid, is just the least reliable part of an emission system. I mean, diesel exhaust fluid is a headache on its own. It crystallizes, it can freeze. You got a deaf pump to worry about, deaf lines, deaf injector, deaf metering unit. And it just, it, it at times can create a headache. And not to mention that manufacturers like Detroit Diesel have had over 10 years now to really dial it in and figure it out. And yes, they have become better, but there is still problems and reliability issues, I would say, at least with the trucks that I see. Now, I imagine Cummins is not the only manufacturer that will be more or less forced to change up their um, emission systems to meet this new stricter protocol. And I think that's something important to point out that manufacturers like Cummins, they are not quote unquote, the bad guys because they are just doing what they are told and they are trying to bring their customers the best possible engines, the most reliable engines, the most powerful engines, while, you know, kind of being a little bit handcuffed in order to meet this new emission regulation. So I think that's something to point out as well that despite these manufacturers implementing these new emission systems that may or may not be reliable, they're just doing what they're told. Now the third and final big change coming in 2027 involves mandatory manufacturer emission component warranty. And I had no idea this was a thing. So currently medium duty trucks, which I'm like 99% sure encompasses HD pickup trucks, something like this beautiful F250 here, currently has five years or 100,000 miles of coverage, 160,000 kilometers. And in 2027, that is changing to 10 years 280,000 miles of coverage or 450,000 kilometers of coverage. And we thought a 50% reduction in particulate matter was a lot. This is a 280% increase in manufacturer warranty for emission components. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that involves the engine as a whole, uh, because I believe this power stroke has a five year, 100,000 mile warranty. So I'm not completely sure about that, but without a doubt, the emission components will have a 280,000 mile warranty, which whew, that is a long time and a, probably a little bit daunting as a manufacturer to see that you are now forced to warranty items that far along. And for the true HD trucks, trucks that I work on, the warranty is even longer, but here's what Cummins had to say, which I found very interesting. The warranty period increases from five years, 100,000 miles to 10 years, 450,000 miles. This warranty isn't optional. It's mandated in regulation and the cost will be significant. The cost of this warranty is baked into the base price and the customer no longer has the choice to buy it or not. The system cost is going up for the entire industry. And to me, that is critical what Cummins just said there. Obviously the silver lining is as a consumer that there is some safety net with this new technology that the manufacturer is now gonna be forced to back up their product. But these manufacturers like Cummins, Detroit Diesel, they're in the business of making money. And in order for them to continue to make money while being forced to warranty these products, these components way down the line, they're gonna charge a ton of money up front for these engines now. So you thought that diesel engines were expensive today, buckle up because the price just went up. So those are the three major changes that we get to look forward to coming up in 2027. Reduction of diesel particulate matter, reduction of NOx gases, and the extension, major extension of mandatory emission component warranty. So I'm, I'm intrigued with what something like Ford or GM or Ram are gonna be doing moving forward because I would imagine it involves either tweaking the engine, certainly tweaking the emission systems involved with these manufacturers. And at the end of the day, it's all just gonna cost money, especially that really long warranty. So it's just, these engines are just gonna, I, I feel like they're just gonna get stupid expensive. And at some point, maybe, manufacturers just gonna say, no one's buying these engines, so we're just gonna stop making them. And maybe, just maybe, good old cat was not that stupid to stop making on-road diesels like 10 years ago. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure I know what you think, but always love hearing from you. And if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. 
If you like stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because I will be keeping an eye on this emission protocol, what is happening, what manufacturers are doing to meet it, because I think it's sort of, well, I do think it's interesting. And um, well, anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.